Good evening. Thanks for joining us today here in the building. Thanks for joining us um, at home. Friends, we do pray you're blessed in your worship of Jesus with us today. Today's um, a, a special service. We have six youth that will be sharing with us their statement of faith. They're not here. Um, they've come in previously, and we've recorded their statements of faith. So this confirmation Sunday, as they're confirmed, uh, we'll be lifting them up in prayer, but also hearing from them um, why their faith is important to them. Other than that, we, do, we are celebrating communion um, today at the end of our worship service. And for those of you who are worshiping at home this weekend, we do have uh, drive-up communion again tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, October, what is it, 20. Fifth, thank you, October 25th. I believe that's it for our service notes, so I pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this day. I invite you to stand now as we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary, I invite you to join me now as we take a few moments to reflect upon our past week, silently bringing all those sins we know and those sins we don't know to God our Father. Together now we cry out to our Lord, Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Now friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated for our scripture readings. First reading for today comes from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, Endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who loved his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
Our little kids are at home this evening, but we have little kids at heart here in the building with us for our children's message. This is a Bible. And this is a, a Bible. There's, there's lots of good verses in, in both of these Bibles. Both of these Bibles, whatever one I pick up, tells us of the love of Jesus. It, it tells us of the forgiveness that is ours for the many mistakes that we make. It tells us of the grace that God has for us. That no matter how bad we are, his love for us in Jesus Christ is always there. I have a question for you tonight, my big kids, my little kids, whether you're at home or here that I want you to think about. What is your favorite Bible verse? And why? I've got quite a, a few highlighted in, in this one, but, but also in this one that I have given to, I gave to my son Grady about four um, years ago. And, and, and I gave that Bible to him because I got a new teaching Bible that I was going to go into. And, and what I did is I had highlighted a lot of verses as I worked my way through this. And one time, Grady had to do the devotion before he was going to school. And he couldn't find the devotion book because the house was a wreck. And so he ran into his room and, and grabbed this Bible that I had given to him. And he opened up to Isaiah 40, and he read verses 30 and 31 that says this. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That just happened to be the same verse that Lauren had read earlier in the day for her devotion. And she asked Grady, well, why did you pick that verse? And Grady said, because Dad highlighted it. And if Dad highlighted it, it must have been important to him. So therefore, it's important to me. I found that, that really, really cool. Not only because Grady knew that that was an important verse to me, but he knew that that verse should be important to him as well. And, and that's the great thing about scriptures. There's so many wonderful verses in here that we can stand on. That we can put our faith and trust in. Today, in a few moments, you're going to watch six students, six 10th graders, share their statements of faith on a Bible verse that they picked out that is important to them. And then each in their own way, they're going to explain that Bible verse. And so I pose that question to you tonight, or you this morning when you're watching it, what Bible verse is a favorite of yours, and why? See, the more we're into the Bible, the more we know what verse is important to us, the more that helps us give us the strength to stand firm. Because as we heard Paul tell Timothy, you know, our ears go other ways. There's so many things around us that are trying to pull our attention away from where our firm focus needs to be. My hope is, whether you're young or old, you sit with mom or dad, or you sit with yourself, or you sit with your spouse or with a friend, and you go through the Bible that you have. Or you start reading it again and find, all right, what verse means a lot to me and why? And it's my prayer that that verse then helps you stand firm in the love that Jesus Christ has for you, no matter what you're going through. All right, would you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for your word. Help me dig in to your word for strength to stand firm in my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so Paul said here in 2 Timothy 4, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, 
but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Friends, sound teaching is found in only one place. Contrary to what the world says, it's found only here in the Word of God. You can come in here on the weekend to hear it proclaimed. And that's great. But we have to remember that it's you and I who are called to proclaim it, to share it, to live it. Throughout our lives, there's been people who have taught us this. Pastors and DCEs, parents and grandparents teach it in the home. And this is all to prepare us to be ready. For what? Well, well Paul tells us that in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. He says, proclaim the word, share the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Th these words were for Timothy from Paul, yes, but they're just as important for you and me. Today, this confirmation weekend, we have this opportunity to hear from six students on what they have learned from their classes with Chad, from their grandparents, from mom and dad, but also from their life experiences. And what we will see is that the Holy Spirit is at work in them. And I pray that you're then moved by that same Holy Spirit and reminded of the importance of your own statement of faith, of what you stand firm on, of your need to be ready to proclaim the true word of God. Before we begin their videos, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for claiming us as your own. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to be at work in our lives, creating and keeping us in the saving faith. This day, as we hear from your children, may you daily provide them peace of heart and mind as you speak through them to share their faith in you with us and all those in their neighborhoods. May we who listen be moved to pray for these young people and also be moved to be prepared in and out of season to proclaim your truth and love with sound teaching in a world with itching ears. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello. There's a good chance you know me already, and if not well, then I am Ben Akala. I'm here today to share my statement and affirmation of faith with you today, even though I'm recording it at a different time. And I've chosen as my Bible verse, Matthew 28, 20b, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. I'll return to this verse later, but first, that word, affirmation. This word has two individual and yet still interconnected meanings. One is simply the action or process of affirming something or being affirmed. That's understandable, but it's not the most colorful. The other, however, is emotional support and encouragement. And I think both those two definitions together share my life with God. One is the colorful side of his emotional support through the tough times and battles. The other, the encouragement to help me get through all the troubles and hardships. That other definition, however, shows the struggle many, including myself, face in this new age where anyone can say anything and act as if they know everything. Many don't always like to talk about God's work or outright denounce it. And many of us had to grow up with that. And it's that struggle that goes into affirming our faith, confirming what we believe to be true because we know it is true. God's emotional support and encouragement is what helps me and others to find that affirmation and that understanding. For he wants what's best for us, 
and eternal life without strife or hardship and free from the shackles of sin and loss of faith. We shall struggle until our time has come, but with both our affirmation and God's support of that affirmation, I and hopefully everyone shall be able to overcome. For I know that God is with me because he says, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The verse that I chose was Psalms 55, verse 8. Unto the Lord will I make my escape from the storm. The setting of this verse is, what, is about casting your burdens onto the Lord along with having God help, you, help keep the devil away from you. This verse gives me comfort in whatever situation I am in. All I have to do is put my trust in God and he will help me through any situation. It also lets me know that I'm not alone in my life and that the Lord is also there for me through the, to help me through the toughest things in my life. In my life, I have not always put trust in God, but he has always found ways to help me get by giving him, me little signs in my life to let me know that he, he is here to help me. About a few years ago, I had a very bad breakup with a very good friend of mine. We have been friends ever since elementary school. I trusted her and believed that she and I would be really good friends for a very long time. But that all changed when she started to spread lies about, around our friend group about my other best friend, just to start drama. As the school year went on, her lies about my other friend got more serious and more descriptive. She even said that the other friend was saying bad things behind my back. I talked to my other friend about what she might have told, said, and she told me the truth, that she did not say anything about me. It was a very rough path in my life because I kind of felt like I could trust no one because everybody was giving me different answers. But in the end, I found the truth, and I figured out who was telling the truth and who was lying to me. My point to the story is that not long after the situation, situation had ended, I was looking for a new wallpaper for my phone, and then I came across a wallpaper that had this verse, Psalms 58, verse 8. 55, verse 8, sorry. <laughs> on, on it. It read the verse, and I read the verse, and just thought of how I should have put all my trust in him to help me through all the drama I had, I had experienced. Now, whenever I have some type of drama happening in my life, I always read that verse and just let it sink in to help remind myself that God is here to help me. I do believe that this verse is a witness of God's love and truth to others because he does want, he does want you to tell him everything that you're going through in life and, ev and even though you might think it might be embarrassing to share, he still wants you to share it with him. People dis disciple in different ways, but as long as we pray for others and spread the word of God, we are discipling. The way, the way that this verse helps me with my discipling is that when I pray for my friends and family, I pray for God to be with them through their struggles and successes and to protect them. Nobody's relationship with, with God is the same because each of us are different people. My relationship with God is knowing him and believing in him that he is the one true God and nobody can replace him. My relationship has grown in the past two years since my family has moved to Luther Memorial. I'm so thankful for, to have my relationship grow with him because I feel more happy and more alive. But like every relationship, they have their ups and downs. Sometimes I forget that he's here with me, but this verse helps, me rem helps remind me that he is there to help. Every time I read this verse, I feel like, the relation I feel like our relationship keeps growing and growing because it reminds me that I, it is not just me, it is me and God together. My plan in the future is to keep God close to me and maybe even closer than he is now. As I continue, walk, as I continue my walk of faith, I also want to grow and make connections with a church family when I go, get older and go off to college and, le and my life outside of school. Going to church is a big part of my relationship with God because, because I'm able to worship him with my friends and family. Just, just talking to God is another way that my relationship with God will continue as my life goes on. God will always be there for me forever. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, 
whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Throughout difficult times in my life, my faith has not always been the strongest. There have been times where I wanted to give up or where I questioned God. I thought that if God is real, why would he allow such horrible things to happen? This isn't just in the far past either. There was no exact point in time where my faith was suddenly perfected and went on without question. I still fall to doubt when things get tough, but this has only made my relationship with God that much stronger. Even throughout the darkness, he is good to me. Tough times have taught me the importance of prayer, moments where I have difficulties in my friendships or even losing loved ones to death. Times like those have definitely made me question and struggle with my faith. However, I came to the realization that just because I had questioned God didn't mean that he had left my side. He's always been there, even if I don't necessarily believe that he is. He's shown me that through the blessings that he gives me every single day. James 1, verses 2 through 4, is at work in my life today through the strengthening of my faith that is the outcome of my struggles. Kaminsky in my verses Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do anything through him who gives me strength. The reason I chose this verse is because the meaning of this verse is that you can get help through the strength of the Lord. I felt the strength of my, the Lord when Jack, my dog, a great friend of mine, died. And he was a great friend because he followed me everywhere I went, like what God does. And he and when I was bored, he was always there with me, like like God. And then and for, and he always had fun with me by playing fetch for hours on end on the beach. And when he died, I felt God's strength raise me up and made me feel better about myself. And, and that this meaning that God always follows you and helps you anywhere you are and, and how you feel. And I found a way to include God more by watching the Bible Project. When I began my statement of faith, I thought it would be easy. What can be easier than writing in first person, being yourself, and all that? There is no formal language, which I personally struggle with, and I feel I write better in first person. I soon found out that this was not about the writing. I thought I'd just pick a verse, analyze it, and connect it back to me, and shebang, it was done. What I did not realize was that this would be one of the hardest things I've done. The first verse I picked was a psalm. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. Psalm 91. 3, 4, and 14. This is a really great verse and one that I should live by. It's got things that I can connect to, such as a buckler and, or a fowler. But my issue with this verse is that it didn't apply to me. So far, I've had an incredibly easy life. I've never had anyone close to me die. I've never had to struggle with my faith, any of that. I've gotten hurt badly maybe twice for all my recklessness, and I have quite a few talents that I can use. My family has a strong faith, and they have brought me up in that faith. But now things get hard. I needed to actually think more about the why. Why do I believe in, trust, and love God? When I started thinking about it, I realized I've never thought about it on such a personal level before. I won't deny that I shed a few tears over this fact. I thought my whole life that I could pinpoint exactly how, why I believed, but I didn't. Thank God that I have to do this statement of faith now, or I might never have thought about it. Here's a question. How do I know that God forgives me, and do I feel it? This I have felt my whole life without even realizing it. I have been brought up in a family of strong Christians. My parents don't shout at each other. They don't yell at me for no reason. They love and support me through everything I do. They forgive me when I do the worst things. They correct me when I go astray. I had never thought about how they could do this, even under the most stressful of circumstances. But when I actually think about it, it becomes clear that this is the light of God shining through them. Because they can forgive me, love me, and care for me, God, who is infinitely greater than them, 
can do so much more. Now, I was going through some verses with my parents, who were helping me by asking questions about my faith and the verses. Throughout the ones that stood out to me, there ran a common theme. What about my future? Some of these verses are like Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Or Hebrews 12, 11. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The common theme in these two verses is that God is in control of our future. Note that I did not choose these verses for that reason, but you can quite clearly see that theme. When attempting to choose a verse, I told myself I would not choose any from the sheet Pastor gave me. They were just jumping off points, places to get into the Bible and start reading. But God knew what he was doing when he had Pastor put together this sheet. I also told myself that I wouldn't choose a verse everyone probably knows or has heard. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Well, now. It appears I'm still not good at thinking outside of the box, but that is okay because that's how I was created. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Everyone has probably at least heard this verse before, and I wasn't too keen on being that kid who can't find a verse of his own. But really, with all these things I've been talking about so far, it fits really well. My issue is, my issue has been, I haven't trusted God fully, even though I've been taught my whole life to do so. I struggle with giving up the illusion of control that I am given. This verse has been a part of teaching me to give up that control, but it has never really hit me until now. Now, I feel that after acknowledging that I have not been trusting God, it is easier to give my control to Him. Moving forward, in writing this, I was forced to acknowledge my shortcomings, analyze how and why I believed, and question what it meant to be a Christian. Because I've recognized where I've gone awry in my faith walk, I can now fix my past mistakes by trusting God with my future. To be a Christian, all I need is to trust God to hold me close through my walk with in Him. And I know God cares for me because He has put people in my life to guide my walk forward and direct me on my path towards Him. By the grace of God, I have found these answers. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I chose this verse because in recent times it has really spoken to me. COVID and all the far from normal circumstances that come with it have really gotten me down and hopeless. I spend too much time wondering when this is all going to be over and back to normal. If it were up to me, it'd be back to normal in a heartbeat. But since it's not up to me, I look to God. I remember this verse that he has given me, and I know that he has all my plans set out. He knows how it's all going to end, and I have to put my faith in him that plans for welfare and hope are in my future. In order to really dive into this verse and what it means to me, we need to know the setting of Jeremiah 29. Most of the chapter is of Jeremiah's letter to the exiles. In Babylon, the Israelites were being held in exile by King Nebuchadnezzar. And as most captives would, they started losing hope. Then. Jeremiah the prophet sent a letter from Jerusalem to the surviving elders, priests, and prophets in exile. The letter starts off on verse 5 and 6 by saying, Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. Continuing on verse 7, it says, But seek the wealth of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. To me, these three verses are God explaining to the exiles how they should make the most of their situation, that they should reproduce and seek welfare. As the chapter goes on, it talks about how the Israelites should continue seeking God throughout their hardships. God says that in his time, he will bring them back to the place that they were sent into exile from and punish the kin king and kinsmen of Babylon who did this to them. This ultimately shows that God knows what he's doing and has a plan. When we follow his plan and listen to him, we will be rewarded. Now that we understand what's going on in Jeremiah, I want to talk a little bit about my struggle. 
this first. As I mentioned earlier, I can get really down sometimes I'm not seeing something going in the direction I think my life should be going. I can get frustrated and I need to remember that I should wait for God and his plan. Sometimes I even think that God has forgotten about me or doesn't have a plan lined up for me. This verse in this whole chapter of Jeremiah 29 has really helped me with knowing that he is indeed with me all of the time, even when I can't feel it. Also, that it may not make sense right now, but God sees the bigger picture and always wants what's best for me. Despite all of this, many times I do fail at this lesson. One story that comes to mind when I think of this happened just about a month ago. It was the day right after I had picked out Jeremiah 29 11 as my confirmation verse. My volleyball season wasn't playing out the way I wanted it to, and I was extremely disappointed and upset. I talked to God asking him why he had chosen me to go through this after all I had worked for. I wanted him to make things happen my way and by my plan. I was even angry at him for making it not happen. Later that night, I was checking my phone before I went to bed, and I stumbled upon someone's Instagram story. On the post, it labeled a couple of Bible verses, and the one right in the middle was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I was overwhelmed with joy and knew God was with me in that moment. He had heard my cries even when I was rude to him and quick to anger. He reassured me and helped me remember that he does know what he's doing. About a week later, I was doing devotionals on my phone and the verse popped up again. And since then, I continued seeing the verse place to place and it always gave me such comfort knowing God has a plan for me. Now, instead of crying out to God and begging him to make things go my way, I pray to him, asking for peace, contentment, and patience with his plan. As I move forward in my faith walk, my plan is to continue including God in my life by going to church weekly and doing my devotionals to learn about his wonderful plan and great love for all of us. Thank you for listening to me today. Paul continued on in 2 Timothy 4, where he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who loved his appearing. Now, just like those students, it's important that each of you remember this. The Lord stands with you. The Lord stands with you and strengthens you so that his message may be proclaimed. He keeps you in this faith. He strengthens you as you share Jesus, as you know Jesus. What powerful words for us to finish up on today. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that just like those students, we can keep the faith. That we will receive the award, the crown of righteousness, the gift of everlasting life. Not by what we have done, but by what has done, been done for us by Christ Jesus. Those students know, they sat with me and talked with me for a half hour. They, they know that the world's going to continue to throw quick answers at them. And the world will continue to do the same to you and me. The world will continue to tell us that the grass is greener on the other side. Satan will continue to tell us lies for us to believe. But dear friends, I plead with you to stand firm. Stand firm in your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the one who saves you. He is the one who sees you through those darkest days. He is the only one who forgives your sins. He's the only one who can and has saved you from the world that we live in. So all of us, young and old, we need to hear this truth again proclaimed by these kids today. That Jesus Christ died for them, for us, for you, for your sins. Never did he turn his back on you. Never will he turn his back on you. Fight the good fight. Stand firm in the faith. Stand up today. Proclaim your faith again in Jesus Christ. For he and he alone is the Savior who has set you free. You can stand firm in that faith as you live your lives joining him where he's already at. Showing yourself, showing your children, showing your grandchildren what that looks like. 
dear friends, be strengthened by His truth and love. And when your race is over, He will crown you with the ultimate prize, eternal life with Him. No greater gift has ever been given. This is yours forever by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. But now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts, our minds firmly focused and grounded in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to stand and join me as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we go to our Lord in a time of prayer. O oh, Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries both near and far as they serve their lives in service to you. Keep them strong in their faith and the Holy Spirit alive in their hearts. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom of worship you in spirit and in truth. So we humbly ask that you grant to Donald, our president, to Tony, our governor, the Congress of these United States, the legislator of our state, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Holy and gracious God, as your power is revealed chiefly in showing to mercy those in need, we humbly ask that you give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us especially this day as we bring to you Gary and Sam, Melissa and Logan, John, Larry, Susan, Kim as she recovers from her surgery, Steve and Jackie Rolfs, fathers who both are seriously ill at this time. Provide them with peace and comfort in you. Provide that same peace and comfort, Father, with the family of Dave Messler, who was called home this past week. Allow them to continue to know the peace beyond all understanding 
in the love of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you've given great gifts to all your people and provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. We ask that you bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor you with the works of their hands. Gracious God and Father, your own Son has set his table among us and gives his own flesh and blood to be the bread of heaven that feeds us everlasting life and the cup of salvation in which our thirst is satisfied forever. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may commune worthily and in repentance and faith feast upon his holy sacrament. Bring us at last to that day when all earthly divisions will cease and will be one people before the altar of the Lord. Until that day, Lord, preserve us among your word and your sacraments. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets, until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel. Bless those who this day, this weekend, are confirming their faith in you. And bless us with the desire to know and keep your word and truth. Encourage all your people to forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in both body and soul and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we have an opportunity to share in God's gifts of his body and blood. Um, these are our communion kits. If you like one, haven't picked one up yet, Chad will get you one. Um, as we share in this, I want to remind you that we truly believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of the world. Through him and him alone comes our salvation and the promise of eternal life. In Holy Communion, we believe that the body and blood of Christ are truly present in the bread and wine. And to those who receive him with a repentant and open heart, he gives the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Now our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you now to go ahead and flip over to your wafer side and then peel back on that and then take and eat. For this is the true body of Jesus Christ given into death for all your sins. And then the same thing on the wine side. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed upon Calvary's hill for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now that you receive this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may its strength preserve you steadfast in that one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in our Lord's love, his joy is never in need. Peace knowing all your sins have been forgiven. Amen. Now, friends, receive this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please have a seat. That concludes our worship. Just a couple of quick announcements for you today. First, thank you all for joining us um, this week, whether you're at home worshiping or you're in the building. We do greatly appreciate you clicking on the video or joining us in worship of Jesus today. Just a few things. Um, we are looking for a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school is off and running. We're very thankful for that.
for a two-month stint in January and February for second through fourth grade. So if that's something that may interest you, uh, please talk to Chad. Um, if you're here, he's in the back. If you're not here, um, you can find him online um, at our website. Um, also, we are doing Operation Christmas Child. Very excited to be part of that again. Any questions on that, contact Heidi Reese. Um, and then for me, just to thank you um, for all the prayers and, and letters and emails this, this month of October. Um, just encouraging to know um, that we are uh, blessed to be here and appreciated by you. So thank you all so much for that. Uh, it is truly um, a, a blessing to serve you here. One final thing, next weekend is... Um, All Saints Sunday on Sunday, so we are looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to take another week off from a jog through John, and we're going to focus in on All Saints Sunday and, and really hear a message about that. That's it. So I do pray you are blessed in your worship of Jesus with us today. If you commune with us, there is a recycling bin you can drop um, there on your way out. Um, and if you don't have a church home or if you've clicked on us and you'd love to come and visit us here, we'd love to have you come back and worship Jesus with us again. God's blessings, friends.